Hi, and welcome to the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Shelley Whitehead. Thanks so much for joining us. You know, we are here because there are amazing businesses and organizations that have stepped up and said, hey, we want to keep you going. And so we want to thank those people who've stepped up. We want to start by thanking our premier supporters. They are the City of Owatonna, Express Employment Professionals, Owatonna Public Utilities, Safe and Drug Free Coalition of Steel County, and United Way of Steel County. Thank you to them for helping support us right here at the Owatonna Today Show. Also, thank you to our primary supporters. They are the Amy Swain Hearing Centers and Little Theater of Owatonna. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for our interlude supporters. They are Abraham Consulting Technologies, Bremer Bank, Brenda Bednar Mortgage Office, Glenn, Me Glenn Meager and Tim Thomas of the Brick Meager Funeral Home and Medford Funeral Home, Brookdale Senior Living, Clare Bridge and Sterling House, Carlson Branstead and Company CPAs, ERA Gillespie Real Estate, Fairview Animal Medical Center, Horizon Eye Care Professionals, Clancher and Sun Landscaping and Concrete, Napa Auto Service, Owatonna Business Incubator, Owatonna Foundation, Profinium Financial, r &K Electric, Snap Fitness, Steel County Historical Society, Steel County Transitional Housing, the Third Hand Incorporated Video Productions, and TPS Insurance. Thank you to them, and we'd like you to thank them by going in and saying, hey, we saw you on the Owatonna Today Show. You can also thank them by giving your business, because these are great community businesses and organizations, so make sure you do that. Stick with us today. We're going to be getting an update from the City of Owatonna, as well as talking to some of the, uh, the Owatonna Senior Citizens of the Year. So stick with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet. And I'm Dr. Nick Vincelli of Horizon Eye Care. We want you to see what you love and love how you see. We're proud sponsors of the Owatonna Today Show. I needed more than just another dead-end job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. With the kids off to college, I decided it was time for me to go back to work and express myself. Express got me in touch with some really great companies. Now, I'm on my way to a great career. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. We're back. Thanks for joining us. I have with me Chris. Chris Busey. Busey. Yes. Look, I said it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, uh, introduce yourself for us if you don't mind. I'm Chris Busey. I'm the city administrator here in Owatonna. Yeah. And it's kind of been a sad week for Owatonna. It has been a sad week. We lost one of our uh, most uh, treasured uh, mm -hmm. council members, Raymond Trulson, passed away. And um, you know, he's, he's left such a huge mark on this community with his generosity and his community service in all kinds of ways, from JCs to his church to the city to um, parks and recreation. I mean, he, this, this gentleman was just involved in uh, many aspects of our community. And, he, and I, having met him myself, he's just a giver. He's somebody who loves he to is. give. Yeah. He likes people. He loves people. He loves oh, talking yeah. to people. And I think that's why he enjoyed being a city council member. Oh, absolutely. That interaction was part of that. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. just huge. He, you know, he was always about people, and he started this organization called Star People. And it would be, and it's so typical of Raymond, to thank people for volu volunteering. Mm -hmm. So he would host a dinner for them. He would give them a um, you know, a little remembrance, a nice, beautiful star, and mm -hmm. he'd do that once a year. I mean, just to thank other volunteers in the community. Yeah. So, because he saw that as an important part of right. what Owatonna mm -hmm. was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we do want to, to express our condolences to him, his, his family, and Owatonna. Yeah, so great, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. great loss. Great yeah. loss. So, so, turning the page to um, uh, budget season is upon us. So, the city's been working hard on uh, our 2015 budget already, okay. believe it or not. Yeah. Now this is a process that really entails a lot of work because you review the past year, what worked, what needs to be done. So you get to be mm -hmm. soothsayers and figure out what's right. going to be needed in the next year. Exactly. As well as historians. Yes. <laughs> so it's yes. kind of an interesting combination that it you have is. to do there. Yeah, we began um, really uh, department heads putting budgets together back in June mm -hmm. and we set the preliminary levy. Uh, in September, uh, and then you know have our hearings in 
uh, with the council and the public throughout, and then we adopt it finally in December. Okay. So. Well, and it's an important <coughs> process to not rush that because you want to be able to give mm -hmm. all the information. And is there an opportunity for the public to kind of talk Absolutely. about when is that happening? It's usually? actually every, you know, um, now is our budget season, so we meet the first and third Tuesday of every month, and prior to that we have a study session, and it will focus on different uh, departments um, each week or each meeting. So they're welcome to come to a study session if they will, want to or to the council meeting and give us their input. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already had a preliminary kind of overview session with the council where we um, kind of lay out uh, just the general uh, budget mm -hmm. as we put it together and, and the study sessions are to focus in on you know individual departments and what they're doing. Do we have, I know it's because it's early, but are there some ideas of, of projects that we're going to look at or, or ways we can yep. work on making the, the city a little bit better? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, this year we, um, we've we increased the budget. Uh, expenditures are up a little over 2%. Okay. Uh, the good news is our our tax capacity or our, our growth in the community, mm -hmm. property tax pie, has gotten a little bigger. Okay. So it's uh, about 4.19% okay. increase in our property tax pie, and we are uh, proposing a levy uh, just under that, a little, uh, just about 4% um, to, you know, do some catch-up on some delayed uh -huh. infrastructure um, to take care of some modest wage increases and uh, just uh, following the uh, the city strategic plan to, to focus on those key areas mm -hmm. um, they've identified. So we're going to look at... Um, this year, some of our major projects would include uh, street maintenance funding. That is, um, you know, one area where we've kind of fallen behind in, quite frankly, and would like to to do some catch up because. And how old are the are the streets in in Owatonna? Oh, they vary. Okay. You know, okay. and um, really, the best money you can spend is money on maintenance of those streets and keep them in good. Uh, shape and not let them deteriorate to the so, point where you have to completely tear them up. right can, can a street be uh, there will come a time when most streets will have to be redone right but you can maintain them for quite a long time exactly yeah. and you know these that's what uh, the, the conventional wisdom and it is it is true to you know for every dollar you spend on maintenance it saves you you know innumerable dollars in the future to, to reconstruct that street okay. so so um, that's going to be a, a high priority for the city. Absolutely. Like you said, maybe it's something that, kind mm -hmm. of, well, we had a couple really tough, hard decade. Yes, <laughs> we was, have. It was a little squishy in there. Yeah. So to be able to t now be at a point where, yep, we're doing well, we have yeah. an increase in property well, tax. Yeah, I mean, I think you can see that we're on our way back, that we've had some economic growth. You yeah. know, we've had expansions at Daikin and Viracon mm -hmm. and Vision Processing. So, you know, those economic development successes lead to growth in the community. So we are a growing community, mm -hmm. and with that comes, you know, additional demands for services. And so we're, we always try and balance the needs of the community with keeping your, your taxes very affordable and, you know, making sure that our citizens feel they get a good value for their dollar. Well, I think what's interesting is that because of most of the people who work for the city <coughs> live in the city, so they're right, paying the right. city oh, taxes. exactly. So, so, so they don't, they're not just sitting on some high hill somewhere else. They really oh, exactly. do understand that it affects them personally. So oh, certainly. of course you're going to make sure it's, it's at, the, at the most reasonable process. So, um, but that is, so having said that, um, you were mentioning that there might be a slight decrease in property taxes. This yes, year because that, for like a $150,000 home uh, it's an, a decrease of about a dollar but sweet you know but with that <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole menu at some yes that yes you can use that dollar on. exactly <laughs> but you know along with that you get additional uh, street maintenance we're, we're increasing our maintenance cycle we were on like a 50-year cycle okay. <laughs> which is really unacceptable yeah. but with this increased I'm investment uh, we will increase uh, that cycle to a 12 year cycle. Oh, from wow. From 50 That's to 12. So, That's yeah. a huge difference. Right. So, yeah. you know, we're making some real strides right. in uh, maintaining our streets as, okay. as we should. And some of that is um, also, my question is because, you know, once we get into winter, it's a whole season. And so, by creating that maintenance now, that can kind of be preventative for some of those issues. In Absolutely. The right. Yeah. We, you know, no one likes potholes in their. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, Not even the people who film. No, it. no, no they, we all they we like struggle. Yeah, <laughs> right, and you know, it causes damages to vehicles mm -hmm. and you know, upsets our residents. Yeah. We don't like that either. So, yeah. we want to get ahead of that and have some good, smooth streets That's for a us all. That's a huge difference. A huge improvement. Oh, absolutely. That's well, and another addition to the um, to the budget this year is uh, we had money in for a half time additional IT person and so we've added that other half so we'd have an additional full-time uh, IT person so you know with technology needs growing ever every year um, and our 24-hour 24-7 operation of police and fire yep. you know we really have increased our demands in the technology area mm -hmm. this so this required an additional person be added mm -hmm. um, what also is is exciting about that it allows us to be more efficient as well right well I, that makes sense if something's down and the IT person's not on me needing a service may not get that right away because right. of that right yeah. and, and we can take advantage of newer technologies to make us even more efficient mm -hmm. so um, you know as I said this is all in the proposed budget right. we'll be having hearings or uh, meetings on study sessions on the on the proposed budget with the individual departments we'll have a formal presentation um, of the final finalized budget later in the year and then official action in December okay. so you know the public can let us know throughout uh, call me or come to a meeting or yeah. uh, call your council members yeah. And just um, you know, let us know what you think. Yeah. So there's a uh, great opportunity to have input, and you know, we like to complain. <laughs> it's our favorite pastime. Yeah, but yeah, so, but we fun. also need to make sure that we can do something about that. So mm -hmm. if it, definitely, if you do have some suggestions on what you'd like to see have done, there's you know, oh, no, no yeah. promises, but <laughs> it's definitely something to take into right. consideration. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Good. We want to hear from them. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. It's great to see you again, and and we do again express our condolences to Raymond Tolson's family. And um, for all, thank him for all the work that he's done for the city. So, thank you. All right, have a good day. Thanks. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm Rick Smith, golf course superintendent of the Brooktree Golf Course. Brooktree is an 18-hole championship golf course featuring well-manicured greens, tees, and fairways. We are open to the public. I challenge you to find a better maintained golf course for the money we charge here at Brooktree. Come on out and play Brooktree. A great golf course. Everyone deserves opportunities to have a good life. A quality education that leads to a stable job, enough income to support a family through retirement, and good health. But the reality is many children fall behind, many families are struggling, and many others are in poor health. United Way's goal is to find long-term solutions. Thanks to a grant from the Otto Bremer Foundation, we're hosting community conversations this year to address these issues. If you'd like to join us, please call our office. Hi, this is Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. At Amy Swain Hearing Centers, we offer many different brands of hearing instruments because everyone has a different lifestyle. Let me, Dr. Amy Swain, help you find the best hearing device for your hearing needs at Amy Swain Hearing Centers of Owatonna, Austin, and Waseca. Call 1-800-804-3361 for an appointment today, or visit my website. Hi, I'm Brenda with the Mortgage Office of Brenda Bednar, aligned with American Mortgage and Equity Consultants, where closings feel right, right from the beginning. I'm a proud supporter of the Owatonna Today Show. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty. And I'm Deb Gillard with Brookdale Senior Living, Sterling House, and Clarebridge of Owatonna. And we are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, I'm Ron Clancher with Clancher and Sun Landscaping and Concrete. We support the Owatonna Today Show, and so should you. And we're back with the Owatonna Today Show. I have two amazing people with me here today. We do have Vivian Rubador and Harry Harvey Ronglin. Hi. How are Hi. you? Hi. Good. It was fine. Uh, thank you so much for coming in today. You have been uh, chosen as the Owatonna Senior Citizens of the Year. And, right. and you knew this was going to happen. Yeah, was, you know, oh, of course you're going to get that. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no way. Never dreamt it. <laughs> 
love to start with is I'd like you to tell us a little bit about yourself. So we're going to start with you, Vivian. Tell me a little bit about yourself and, and your life and what brought you to this. Well, I uh, grew up over in Butterfield, which the school is no longer there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we moved to Owatonna about 40 years ago. And uh, my husband went to work at OTC and I babysat my children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm and great-grandchildren. <laughs> and uh, then uh, about four years ago, I uh, was watching the homecoming parade and the Grandparents for Education float came by and my granddaughter says, get that number, Grandma, you can do this. <laughs> and so here I am four yeah. years later yeah. and I've been going to the high school every day for four years and I really enjoy it. We were talking, it's kind of like a job, really. <laughs> Almost. Not, not so much volunteering when you go every day. <laughs> but uh, it's very rewarding. Mm. And so I'd like to see more grandparents, rather than sit home watching TV, yeah. they could get out. It's very rewarding to be helping these students, which are our future community, and or somebody's future right. community. Right. We were talking and, and you mentioned that your hours can be for, from an hour and a half to a full day. But again, it tells us that whatever you have time to give, it's right. something you can give. And, uh, you know, it's, it's up to me how many hours per se. Well, the teacher says how many she wants yeah. there. And, yeah. uh, but then it's up to me to say yes or no. Or yeah. This would be all grandparents. They could say yes or no right. or elementary schools or anything. Yeah. So. Well, and you like the high school because you've actually had quite a, quite a history with teenagers. teenagers you were telling yeah. me a little bit about your fostering. Yeah, I had 39 teenage foster children, which needed to learn right from wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and very challenging. Yeah. And uh, my own children and grandchildren, and uh, I just enjoy children. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do volunteer at the high school, what are some of the things that you do there? Well, I'm basically in the options program. Okay which there the students have to be self-motivated. And uh, it's interesting to see what subjects they choose or, and it all has to be okayed by their teacher. Right. And uh, then they do a mentorship program there too and they have to let the teachers know where they're getting their information from and how they got it mm -hmm. and how, how many minutes or hours they worked on it. Okay. And they have to keep track of all this. And uh, then the mentorship kind of prepares them for graduating, which is really neat because yeah. they find out if this is something they're going to like to do or not. Right, right. And you were saying that it's also, so your role is just to kind of make sure they stay on task because right. we were mentioning how they, those kids like their cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> and so and just they're to, teenagers. Yeah, and they're teenagers. And so it just kind of makes sure that they, they stay on task and do what, what they need to do. And if they have questions, doing. I answer them. Yeah, well. Okay, good. And we know you're an amazing speller. So anytime, I love spelling. Yeah. <laughs> anytime you had a spelling question, good. Well, Harvey, let's talk to you a little bit. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, Harvey. You are actually a lifelong Owatonna resident. Well, that's what I call myself. <laughs> I came to Owatonna when I was five years old. Okay. And uh, right here was where I got my education, in right building. in this room right here. In this room, so you actually had class in this room. Yeah, yeah. probably this one. Uh, I was took my classes in this building from one to eight. Okay. Then it was- uh, Over to the high school. I was out of here. Yeah. So you grew up at the state school and, mm -hmm. and uh, that's actually, you've done a lot of work with this state school. Yeah. Why, why was that Why was that so important to you to, to make sure the legacy of the state school continued? Well, I'll tell you, I went to alcohol treatment 35 years ago mm -hmm. and when my, children loved me enough to uh, send me to Hazelden to straighten me out. And uh, when I got back, I, I went into my childhood up there. We delved in way in here. And uh, I started thinking more and more about the state. I never thought of the state school when I got out of here for years. And, yeah. But um, what, what made me what I am today is the state school. Yeah. And I, uh, how am I going to say this? So, uh, when I came, um, uh, oh, but so anyway, I got interested in, and what happened was there was nothing up here to uh, let people know what this was. Mm. Uh, so, 
I, I went, one day I went to the city council mm -hmm. and I told, told them, I said, I, th I think God left the space right out in front of this main building yeah. where we should put some kind of a statue or something mm -hmm. to recognize that this was a large orphanage at the one lives time. The lives of the kids, yes. Well, when, so they did it. They, uh, uh, we put that in, and when we unveiled it, that day we unveiled it, you'd be surprised to know how many people born, raised, and spent their entire life in Otana would come up to me and say, I didn't know that was an orphanage up there. Oh, that needed to change. So yeah. I, I thought, my God, yeah. 10,635 children went through here and they don't know that? Wow. So that started it. And from there, it, uh, <clears throat> I have, um, my, my wife, actually, I'm like a half a pair of scissors without my wife. <laughs> Let's get that in there. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah, Max is a very important part of your life. That's yeah. right. Since she's been uh, every bit as much a part of this as I am. But after that, we, we statue, well, then I thought, well, let's carry it a little further. Actually, it got way further than Max and I thought it would, really? would be. Really? It's a beautiful museum. So we yeah. put it in the museum. Yeah. Then we uh, uh, updated the cemetery. Where 198 children are buried, uh, and the 151 of them were buried with just their number. Mm -hmm. Well, we've seen to it that they got crosses now and their names, so they're, they're recognized. And then from there, uh, this all took years, of course. <laughs> yes, oh yes. So that now we've got C11 as a tourist uh, play, and we get bus loads of. Uh, of groups in here and that's every how it year. Should be. That's how it should be to remember those families. Yeah. Do you still get to volunteer over at the um, museum to get a chance to do that? Not, not too much. Nobody has to be there because oh. it's kind of self-explanatory. Yeah. Which is, I think, so smart yeah. to make it so people can do it on their own. See, it's open any time the city offices are open because okay. it's along the walls. Yes. Yeah. If you're going want to go to one of the cottages, which is C11, mm -hmm. then you have to line that up. Okay. But that also, we have volunteers, wonderful volunteers. And uh, that's open in the afternoon from 1 to 4. Okay. And, and there will be a volunteer in there. Well, the, 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 uh, the group has come together and, and wanted to thank each of you for all of the work you've done for our community and so <laughs> they they surprised you you were telling me vivian you just you got a message and you just couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it yeah. nervous excitement from there on yeah yeah <laughs> and harvey how was it for you when you got the acknowledgement that you were going to be senior citizen of the year well i i just uh, couldn't believe it i thought uh, dean was kidding me <laughs> <laughs> he does that he's a yeah. kidder dean is yeah so the because oh, go ahead. i'm not saying this lightly I don't deserve it. Maxine deserves this award mm -hmm. and, uh, and all our volunteers, yeah. but I'll accept it. I always like to say Maxine does the work and I get the credit for it. <laughs> so the next step is, is you are going to the state fair and you know, we, we are showing this on Friday. We, re, we did pre-record it. So you're going to the state fair on Thursday. So uh, Max, yeah. we, we, Vivian thinks it's going to be on a school bus, so that'll be some good memories for you. <laughs> Probably. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to say good luck to you and to thank you both. You're changing lives, impacting people, and you're a really great example to the rest of the community. And I love the children you work with and the people you impact. So thank you and good luck. Thank and you. And enjoy it's some our pleasure. cookies for me at the State Fair. You have a bucket of cookies. Enjoy that for me, will you? Oh, I love Pleasure. cookies. Oh, yeah, 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 they're really good. They're really good. <laughs> Sweet Martha's. Sweet Martha's cookies. Yes, thank you so much. Right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We'll be right thank back. You. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Jake with Napa Auto Parts. Napa has the know-how for all your automotive needs. Napa is a proud supporter of the OATAN Today Show. Hello, my name is Katie Marshall. A year ago, my family and I became homeless. We were scared and alone. Today, with the help of Steele County Transitional Housing and generous donors like you, my family and I are safely housed. I am working, going to college, paying my rent on time, 
My children have a warm bed to sleep in every night. My family and I are so grateful for this second chance. Please help others in need by donating to Transitional Housing today. Everyone deserves a safe place to live. Theo had found, oh, I'm just going right into them. I'm so excited about the community announcements. I just went right into them. So these are a look at some of the things that are going around in our community. The Owatonna Foundation announced its next grant application deadline as September 1st of this year. Owatonna-based nonprofit organizations that address one of the foundation's interests may apply. Applications and guidelines can be found at the Owatonna Foundation website or by contacting Owatonna Foundation at 507-455-2995. A public information night is scheduled for Wednesday, September 3rd at the Owatonna Masonic Lodge. The lodge will be open to men in the area who are Masons and non-Masons. If you've always wanted to be a part of a great community organization, this is your chance. There will be a casual informational evening drop-in as your schedule permits. There will be refreshments and come learn how masonry makes, quote, a good man, a better man. It's, uh, if you want more information, you can contact them at owatonnamasons at gmail or owatonnashriners at gmail.com. The Exchange Club Center for Family Unity is announcing their Night to Prevent Child Abuse. That's coming up Saturday, September 6th. It's their 22nd annual Golf to Prevent Child Abuse. And on Monday, September 8th, uh, that's when that event um, is going to happen. Okay, there's two things. Let me get this straight. First, it's Night to Prevent Child Abuse. That's on Saturday, September 6th at 7 p.m. at the Steele County History Center. The second, 22nd annual Golf to Prevent Child Abuse is Monday, September 8th with an 11 a.m. shotgun start and that's going to be at the Brook Tree Golf Course. Um, we do want you to get registrations in as soon as possible for that. The Steele County Historical Society is pleased to welcome uh, Kristen Kaplan Hallsworth, granddaughter of Reuben Buzz Kaplan for a presentation and a book signing on Thursday, September 11th at 7 p.m. in the History Center. Reuben Buzz Coplin was born in Owatonna in 1924, and his travels began when he joined the Army, sent to Germany in 1943 for World War II, and when he came home, he earned his pilot's license and pursued a life of an adventurer. He flew his airplanes in over 75 countries, six continents, winning numerous awards for his flight achievements. And he has rarely passed up the uh, opportunity to travel the globe. He never forgot where he came from. He was the chairman and CEO of Owatonna Tool Company and its subsidiaries and the president and founder of Heritage Halls Museum in Owatonna. In addition, he was respected and a generous community, a contributor to the city of Owatonna, and it's his story. So admission to the lecture will be free for members and $2 for non-members. And the public is invited to participate in the upcoming Living Well with Chronic Conditions workshops beginning in September. The workshops are free and take place at the Owatonna Hospital every Friday beginning September 12th through October 17th. Thank you so much for joining us this, this Friday. I want to remind you to please have a safe holiday weekend. We will be back with a new show on Wednesday. So we'll see you then. Have a great weekend.